Evening everyone, welcome back to my channel True Crime with Jess Rose. How you all doing out there? Hope you're having a good weekend. It's gone cold, it's gone cold really quickly. We had an amazing um, couple of weeks and then just, and the wind and it's just, I think winter's here. No, it's made a difference. We're going to be in the house just like we were at summer. Hey ho, hopefully Christmas will be better. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, uh, my story tonight, um, sorry, I, I knew I meant to say something then and I thought, what, what have I forgot? Um, thank you to all my new subscribers this week um, and the comments I've got and, and, and obviously the likes and stuff. Um, thank you so much again and again just really quickly, I'd really like to do that live video so if you could keep subscribing. I'd really appreciate it and um, yeah just thank you to everyone who has this week um, okay right tonight's story it's from again a show I've done many times it's Britain's Darkest Taboos I bet you're thinking how many programs does this show do loads see there was a mixture there of thousands and hundreds and then I realized it's not hundreds or thousands so it come out loads anyway loads so tonight's story, um, it's titled My Son-in-Law Burned My Family to Death. Yeah, awful. Again, awful story like they all are. Um, and this is uh, the story, of, it's the Crook family um, in Chatham in Kent. And the Crook family, the mum's called Amanda, dad's called Mark. And they have four children, two boys and two girls. <coughs> uh, Amanda is on the show, she's the mom. And Charlotte is on the show and she's the sister. And they're the mom and sister of Melissa Crook. Now, Melissa was the youngest, she was the baby. Um, very, very cute. I've seen all the early videos and photos. Really cute little girl. Um, and they said that even though she was the baby of the family, you wouldn't have thought it. She's very vivacious, very bossy, um, really cute, really funny, and just tended to be the 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 look like, the eldest rather than being the youngest kind of thing. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just coughing. I'm just coughing. There's no hidden thing yet. I was in the shop the other day and I was scared to cough because I did it before and I had people looking at me and I was there and, you know, and it's in your mouth because you don't want to cough in case people start looking at you. So yeah, just coughing, nothing, no, nothing sinister. I'm going to cough again now. <coughs> brilliant, brilliant, true crime girl on YouTube, got corona. No, do you know, jinxing myself now. Right, back to the story. Um, like I said, Melissa, lovely girl, really bossy. Uh, as a teenager, um, she's quite streetwise, she's quite mature. Um, so when she's 15, which it's very young, but like I say, she's quite mature. Um, she meets, now I've practiced this, Danoy Mohammedi. I think I've said that right. But he calls himself Sam, so we're going to call him Sam for the story. I don't want to keep messing up. Although, do I care, which you'll realise by the end of the story, but we're going to call him Sam um, from Iraq. And he's four years older than Lisa, so she's 15, he's 19. A little bit of a awkward one, but anyway, they, the family liked him. They trusted Melissa's choices. Um... And they really did like him at first. They said he was really laid back. It's quite charming. It was said that he doted on Melissa. I mean, it, he treated her like a princess. Um, so, and she was really happy with him. Um, and he, the only problem is, is Sam had a really old fashioned view of relationships, as in, He'd want his dinner cooked, house cleaned, you know, girl at home kind of 
you know, that coins away. Um, now, Charlotte, which is Melissa's sister, you can see she's more of a, uh, she's, she's not that type of girl. She's not that type of girl. It's obviously, from the impression of Gollivo, it's very equal, you know. Um, woman doesn't belong in the kitchen kind of attitude. So, I don't know, maybe she was surprised that Melissa was happy to go down that route. But they seemed very happy and, you know, even though she didn't agree with it, they carried on. But in July 2007, so Melissa's 16 now, she's still a baby. But um, she announces she's going to move in with Sam, who's now 20, in Coventry. Now, I did mention earlier, they're from Kent. So it said that it's like 200 miles away. You know, that's a, a distance to allow your 16 year old, you know, your child to go that far. And Charlotte says that um, initially when she had, she was like, you can't go. And this is her sister. But obviously it's her older sister, she's quite protective. And Amanda, the mum, like I said, both of these were on the show. Um, she just said that had she put her foot down and tried to stop it happening, because Melissa was such a, a, a headstrong girl and loved him, she'd have stood the chance of losing her. And I just she'd have gone anyway. So she went along with it. You know, and just trusted in her daughter. And, you know, they'd known Sam for a little, not too long, but a little while by then. And, you know, I suppose they just had to trust that it'd be okay. Now, in Coventry, it was actually Sam's brother that him and Melissa moved in with. And the family came to, uh, down to Coventry to visit. And the mum says it was a lovely house. You know, the brother seemed lovely. Melissa and Sam seemed to be getting on really well. She was, um, I think she was part-time working and looking after the home, obviously. Um, and he was full-time working. Um, and a couple of months after that, they get their own place. They start renting their own place. And it just seems to be going really well. You know, it's, uh, like I say, they've got this relationship where he goes out full time but she does work she does work part time and you know looks after the house has his dinner ready and it works for them um after two years when um melissa turned 18 he actually proposed and of course she said yes over the moon over the moon and it was you know the mom says they've been together two years by then they'd lived together you know, although they're both, they're both still quite young. I know she's only 18, but he's only 22. Um, you know, and it just seemed to work. And on September the 28th, 2009, they got married. And you see the the uh, pictures of the wedding on, on the show. It's Britain's Darkest Taboos. taboos. Britain's Darkest Taboos. Put my teeth in. Um... And yeah, you see the pictures and they just look so happy. The re they genuinely do, they genuinely do. And even her sister, who'd always been a little bit standoffish about Sam, even she had to say, they both look so happy, you know. And and they went back to commentary and carried on about married life. October 2009, Melissa finds out she's pregnant and she's over the moon. 18, she's married. You know, you would... Although they're both still very young, you would think that after getting married, it would be their next step, I suppose. But Sam's not happy. And it turns out that whether he'd have changed his mind later on, but up until that point, he didn't foresee him and Melissa ever having children. He, he had his life set up. He was happy with her. And kids was just not in his plan. So it said that he he was really not happy about it. Um, but on May the 25th, 2010, baby Noah's born. And I've got to say, if you do watch this program, very cute little boy. Oh, such a cutie. Really big brown eyes. Dark hair. Just gorgeous. Um, but behind closed doors... So on the face of it, it's the perfect little family. 
behind closed doors, um, Sam didn't want to share Melissa with Noah. He he was getting very jealous. Obviously, at the attention she was giving Noah, feeling like that the stuff he'd expected done before Noah had come along perhaps wasn't getting done as quick as he'd like. Um, and then, and Charlotte says, her sister, she says, she didn't understand what the problem was because he was still living his, um, you know, pre-fatherhood life. He was still going out to the bars, going to work, going to the pub. It hadn't really affected him. I don't think he was very hands-on with Noah. Um, and Emma Kenney, who's the resident psychologist on uh, Britain's Darkest Taboos, she does say that it would have been Sam, he would have felt like he was losing control because now instead of all Melissa's time and all Melissa's, Melissa's energy going on him and, you know, I had, uh, what's the words I'm looking for? Loving the ground he walks on. I, every story I go through, I'm so sorry, the coach just caught me eye. I thought someone was standing there. Oh, hearts in my throat. There's another man. Um, yeah, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Love the ground he walked on. He felt that she wasn't doing that anymore. I've really set, I'm so, I've twice now, I've gone off, I've gone completely off topic, completely off track. But that really scared me. And it shows how laid back I am, doesn't it? Like, if that had been a person, I'm just sort of looking at the camera going, you know, <laughs> brilliant. Really, back door there, but I didn't head that way. Um, okay, right, back to it. Emma Kenney, yeah, she said that he would have felt like he was losing control. Uh, he's drinking more. Uh, he's having really angry outbursts. He's now doing drugs as well. You know, so it seems like at 22, he's now living his life in the sense of his clubbing life, his young life, but forgetting that he's got a wife and a child at home. That's how it's coming across. But uh, it, it it's not just outbursts. It's not just shouting. Although he did shout at her once, she told her sister for not having his dinner on the table on time chop chop little lady but um it, it was going further than that he started putting his hands on her but he'd even slap little Noah and Noah would have been months old months so turning into not a nice guy and I think when everything came out it just shocked everyone because he'd appeared a very very laid back guy and maybe that was his temperament and his personality before the drugs and drink got involved. Maybe he was that person originally, or, you know, they met very young. Maybe that was what he was growing into. You know, we don't know, but, um, yeah. Melissa phones Charlotte the one night and she's very upset. And it's early hours in the morning. And she says that he slapped her because she wouldn't have sex with him. And he's left and locked her and Noah in the flat. I mean, what if there'd have been a fire? But I, I don't think that came off, but that's what I thought, you know. Oh, I can't believe I've just said that. You're going to say why in a sec, sorry. Um, but she, of course, oh, that's such a boo-boo. You're going to... She calls the police and he's, um, he's charged with assault. Now, her parents... Obviously, she's phoned her sister, so her parents find out about it. And her parents drive uh, down to Coventry and pick her and Noah up and bring her back. She's had enough. Um, and it said that he'd slapped her in front of Noah at one point as well, which, again, was a, it was a no-no to her. And I just thought, this girl's 18. You know, is she 19 yet? I think she's still 18, even if she's 19. And I just thought, you know... Fair play. She didn't. She didn't put up with it for years and years and years. I'm not saying that anything against anyone who has been in that position. I'm just saying it's, you know, fair play getting out of that situation as quick as she did. 
Um, but she does still really love him. <coughs> she does really love Sam, and he's begging for her to come back to him. And she gives it because she wants it to work, and she actually says to him, "If you get help, you can prove to me the doctor's appointment. You can prove to me, I presume it's AA, AA meetings. If you can prove all that to me." Then I'll consider coming back to you, but you've got to prove that you want me and Noah back. And she allows him to come and visit Noah. I don't think it was really Noah who was visiting, to be honest, but he comes and visits. But he turns up very agitated the once. And she sends him on his way. You know, he loses his temper at the door, at her own parents' door, and she sends him on his way. She's done with him. That's it. It's done. And you know, again, I think, you know, she didn't give him chance after chance after chance. You know, she sounds like a very strong, well, it said she was strong-willed, didn't it? So it, she proved that with him. She was strong-willed and she wasn't going to put up with it. So um, in August of 2011, um, she starts a divorce proceedings from Sam. Now, Sam, he's got a new girlfriend, Sam has. You know, I moved that on very quick then, yeah, which jumped to August 2011, so she started divorce proceedings. And he's met a new girl called Emma Smith. Saw a picture of her, and she looks... Bleh, just... If you see the picture of her... The reason I'm saying this is she's besotted with Sam, and she's very, 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 bit, very bitter... That Melissa not only is his ex, she's his ex-wife, and she has his son, and it's like this triple whammy. She would have known when she met him. She would have she would have realised quite quick that he had this history. But I think the fact that she um, knew that he still loved Melissa, I don't think she could get over that. And she was just very bitter, and she'd phone Melissa and leave like awful messages for her just you know you always hear about the nightmare ex but she's the nightmare new new um partner just a really odd girl i think um just very jealous of her so but now we couldn't come up to saturday september 9th 2011 okay now, Melissa, at this point, she's got a job interview on the Monday. She's trying to move on. She's looking forward with her life for her and Noah. She knows the relationship's over. You know, and look, say, she's got this job interview. She's thinking, we can make a fresh start. Um, and her sister Charlotte does say that Emma called her. Uh, sort of, I think she said it was about midnight, saying, why don't you come over? And stop the night. She must have just wanted like a sister, sisterly night. And Charlotte says she was knackered. She says she was tired. And she told um, Melissa, look, I'm going to see you in a few hours, maybe for Sunday lunch. Um, you know, so I'll see you tomorrow. Well, in the early hours, so we're going into Sunday morning now. Sam is driving from Coventry with Emma up to Kent. And when they get there, they meet one of Sam's friends. And there's early hours, so I think I think it said it was about two o'clock in the morning. The CCTV footage of Sam at a petrol station, and he's filling jerry cans with fuel with petrol. And it said he's planning a horrible revenge. It really is. So at two a.m. So at 2 a.m. September the 10th, 2011, because don't forget it's gone into Sunday morning now. Everyone's asleep in the crook house. Um, Amanda, Mark, so obviously Melissa's mum and dad, Melissa and baby Noah, um, Melissa's brother, they're all in the house, they're all asleep. And Sam pours eight, eight litres, that's a lot of petrol. Eight liters of petrol through the letterbox, and it said that you'd got sort of a um, hose to spray it to make sure it went as far into the house as possible and up the stairs. 
I don't know if you've ever watched the fill parts, but very similar layout in the hallway. So the stairs are right there from the front door. And he lights the match. <clears throat> now, Amanda said she woke up. It must have been to my bit of the smoke alarm, but she said she woke up. Her and Mark woke up. And wherever they were on the landing, the fire was preventing them from getting to the kids' side of the hall where Melissa and Noah was and the son, I think. <clears throat> and um, they couldn't get through. So Mark uh, pushes Amanda out onto the... They must have had an extension. And he pushes her out the bedroom window onto the flat roof of the extension. And she says that when she turned round... And he was about to climb out of the window. She said uh, uh, just a fireball came from nowhere and engulfed him. It must have been so hard for her to do this part on Britain's Darkest Taboos because it's hard for me to repeat. But she described it as like, when the fireball engulfed him, she said it was like looking at a waxwork because his skin was literally melting. She said the smell is something you, you'd never, ever, ever forget. You just think that's a husband, that's a father of a children. How hard would that? Mind you, I was supposed to see it. She's seen it, so how much harder could something like that get? So I suppose repeating it, you know, oh, just devastating. Um, Melissa's brother, he jumps from the bedroom window at the other end of the hall. Breaks both legs, but he's alive. Yes. Um, Mark, when they get him out of the house, is covered in 80%. But 80% of his body's burns and he's rushed to the hospital. Um, and they manage to get in and get Melissa and Noah. But it was it, it's too late. It's, it's too late. And that. And when they got in there, they found Melissa, but they couldn't see Noah. And it took them a little while to find him. You know, obviously they're looking for him. They can see Melissa's not alive, so they're looking for this little baby who's 15 months old. And they actually find him underneath Melissa with a duvet over him and her over the top. She was trying, she was trying to protect him from the fire heartbreaking heartbreaking and that's how they found them both it's still protecting him it's just it's so sad but amanda in all of this thought it was an accident she thought it was like an electrical fault you know it it obviously didn't even cross her mind that it could be malicious she just thought it was a a tragic accident um but the forensics find the petrol, smell of petrol, obviously the trial of petrol very, very quickly. And they arrest Sam, first person they go to. And it's so sad because Charlotte and Amanda both say on the show that they felt they wanted to call Sam so he wouldn't hear about it on the news. You know, their thoughts were going to him. You know, um, but five days after the fire, Mark, her dad dies. And that's three generations. Three generations. What day? Dad, daughter, and grandson. What day? For what? For what? That was his son. That, even if it was his ex wife, that was his son. He just, it said that he just wanted to obliterate the family, the entire family. <clears throat> and it said Emma Kenny says it and it's very similar to a lot of stories that I've done where the control's been lost um, I think wasn't it, was it Holly Gazard you know when the control's lost and they blamed the family because it's like the family have taken the control of that person from them It it it's when do you say someone has a possession so badly that you hate on their family. It's very hard for me to get my head around how you could 
consider someone that much of a possession that possession 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 I'm saying that right aren't I know with possession possession um that you'd you'd kill anyone who was around them that wanted to help them um all three which is obviously Sam his friend and his girlfriend Emma um are arrested and um they're charged with murder and attempted murder um now you, you see on the show the pictures of the house oh, and it's devastated again like the field part it's devastating you can see the trail going up the stairs not just pure black look burns they didn't stand a chance it, oh but in all of this in all the the carnage and the 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 destruction of the house um it shows amanda um finding one and another's dressing gowns even though the majority of the the house was decimated this beautiful dressing gown i think it's green blue perfect condition she says it's the only thing she's got left of that 15 months old and her daughter and her husband you can't imagine what she's gone through and her sister on april the 19th 2012 the trial starts they all wait for it plead not guilty the audacity um it, when uh obviously it, they want to put them through a trial you know they couldn't even give them that they couldn't even show them that little bit of decency they wanted to put them through the trial and amanda says uh, not amanda sorry charlotte says that when she was giving evidence that sam just kept staring at her kind of not intimidating kind of smiling at her and you just thought oh you disgusting disgusting bloke um but up until the cctv footage was shown at the trial Amanda says she genuinely didn't want to believe it was him. She did not want to believe it was him. You know, she obviously knew it was arson boy then. She knew it was malicious. She just didn't want to believe that a man, a man, <laughs> would do that to his own family and her family. But once the CCTV footage, you've seen him, you see him in the petrol station. Once they, they showed that at the trial, she, she knew then. Um, she, they had to believe that he'd done it. But he showed no remorse whatsoever. He was smirking. He, he was denying everything. Just no remorse whatsoever for what he'd done, which most of them don't do, they. On July the 2nd, 2012, Sam and his friend were both found guilty of murder. And sentenced to Sam was sentenced to 38 years and his friend was sentenced to 34. Um, and Emma uh, was found guilty of manslaughter. She got 14 years. She was there. And judging on the dates that I've worked out, she was with him max a couple of months. Max. Uh, uh, how could you love someone so much? that you would go along with them annihilating their family in the worst possible way. How would you go along with that? That's not love. That's not love. It was probably more about the jealousy and bitterness of Melissa rather than any love she had for him. I'd, just if you saw the photo, she encapsulates everything you might be imagining now. I, I feel. Um, and... At the end of the show, you know, uh, Charlotte, she says something so sad. She says, you know, they'll never have full family photos anymore. You know, there's always the six of them, the mum and dad and the four kids. And they'll never have that again. But there is a photo that she shows and it's the dad, Mark, and Melissa's behind him and he's kind of got his hand on her hand, her hands on his shoulder, he's sat down. And she says she loves that photo because it's like he was he's taking care of her. 
but she, she looks fondly at that photo and I thought that was lovely. Um, and Amanda, um, she said, they took my heart, but they're not taking anything else. You know, she said it would have been so easy after losing her husband, her daughter, her grandson, to turn to drink, to not leave the house again. You know, to just roll up in a, in a ball and, and never be able to snap out of it again. But that's what she said. She says, they've took my heart, but they're not going to take any anything else from me. They're not taking my life. And I just thought, it's still so early days. I mean, they were only sentenced in 2012. It's been eight years. You know, you might think that's a long time, but I think for something so devastating within your family... To be able to do that interview and that shot, I just you you you, you got to give it, give it to, you know to to keep the family's name and Melissa's name out there and you know to to raise awareness of the dangers of these controlling. I was about to say men. I was about to say men purely based on the story I've just done, but you know we know there's women out there that can be just as controlling. There's another story I'm gonna do for you. It's, uh, again, Britain's Darkest Affairs, it's a killer. Cougar, no, a, a cougar killed my son. Oh, I, I, you'll know in the next story I do, but, um, you know, that's a female, that's, you know, the other way around. And so, it, it, it's just scary that people like that are out there, that will go to those lengths, because they, they were hurt. They were jilted. They had to get revenge. There's so many stories I've done where that's the outcome because they haven't liked that they weren't a nice person to stay with. So they didn't quite realise that. And then when the person gets rid of them, because they're not a very nice person, they go out and prove that they're not a nice person. It's just crazy to me. Um, but yeah... That's the story. It's a really cold story, long as the Britain's darkest taboo stories are, but it's my son-in-law burnt my family to death. Um, story of Michelle, Michelle Crook. And yeah, just such a sad case, isn't it? I mean, they've had they've got a long time, um, you know. But I suppose well, by the time they get out, they'll still be young enough to start again. It's just quite sickening. It genuinely is. It genuinely is. I don't know what to say. I don't know the game. Don't know how to end it. I need to really get a, an ending to my stories. But thank you for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Um, and yeah, if you've enjoyed the story tonight and you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you wanted to. I'm not going to um, put you all through a jingle again. I promised anyone who knows me and who hunting me down after that jingle um, I won't do it again so yeah if you could subscribe like and comment I'd really appreciate it I'm, I'm dancing without doing the jingle thank you so much for joining me again and I'll see you soon thank you